Hey, Jim, watching what the market's doing today, seeing Boeing really driving things higher once again this morning after all the gains it experienced last week. It was up 40 percent last week. Looks like it was up about 8, nine, eight to 9 percent just this morning once again. Seeing moves of 20 to 25 percent in some of these energy names that are out there. I, I just wonder, would you tell people to go with the flow at this point, or does the momentum worry you, given how, how fast and far some of these gains have come? Uh I would like to say the momentum worries me, but I was listening to Stan Druckenmiller, and I think that there's something going on that is hard to reconcile. These are morning moves, uh, people placing bets, basically, in the morning, and then, this, there you go, the stocks run, and sellers don't come out. And I think that that's what's confusing people. That I happen to, for instance, like Norwegian Cruise Lines very much, and it's something I speak about with Frank Del Rio. Um, but the stock is just, it's, it's on a tear. But it's on a tear between 5 o'clock and 8 o'clock. It's almost as if people are saying, okay, listen, this is the one we're going to take up today. Now, uh, that's not, it's a medium size. Uh, Boeing, it's hard to manipulate up. But it does seem, why get the jump on Boeing? Why go in like that? Maybe because of the numbers that Phil talked about? Or is there something going on? Are there people just gunning stocks? Uh, and then not, not finding any resistance, as if the sellers had decided to take a holiday. Uh, and, and, Becky, the airlines have all been gunned since the uh, uh, price that Warren Buffett sold them. Now, of course, the, uh, yeah. they've gotten some money from the government. But this is very unnatural buying. And I don't really – I work very hard to try to figure out the unnatural buying. But it's in cruise ships, uh, it's in oils, and it's in airlines. And cruise ships and airlines – seem almost manipulated up before the market opens. It's very strange. Never it, seen it. it. It's weird, Jim, just in terms of what you're saying, like if you wanted to sell this stock, you probably sold it long ago. Yes. So you mentioned that there are, there's no sellers stepping no. in to say, okay, we'll, we'll give it back to you at this point. Well, they took on a lot um, of debt. The government took concerns, a lot of stock. had concerns, you were out. I mean, the government should be blowing out all of its stock. I mean, I've been calculating how much the government's <laughs> made. Uh, it, it seemed fanciful when they did the investments, but... Uh, I'm going to try to get a hold of Treasury today and say to the Secretary of Mnuchin, look, I think it's time. Don't uh, avail yourself of this rally because if there's any downturn, any COVID, I mean, it, COVID hasn't gone away, but these stocks trade that it has. And we know that American was very bullish about the fact that they might be able to do 55 percent of last year. But does that mean that American should go back to where it was before the pandemic? So mm. uh, I'm watching these stocks and saying, where are the sellers? Evercore had an American price tag of $1 a couple, a couple months ago. $1. Uh, and the other stocks that are being, I think, uh, gunned up, so to speak, are Hertz and Luck and Coffee. Now, I don't know what they're worth, but neither does anyone else. But I'll tell you what they're not worth, <laughs> what, it's being, what they're being gunned for. Now, it, it, this is a, a process that I've seen maybe in the 80s, that you could gun stocks that may not exist it, it coming through this period. But it's happening and I do wish some sellers would take advantage of it because these prices for Hertz and Luckin may not last.